Hey everyone and welcome back to Build UX. In this episode of the CRM Inbox series, we're going to get our code base set up in GitHub and bring in all of the design assets that we need to build out the UI. Where we left off in the last episode is we finalized all the design in Figma, so all of our components are ready to go. Now it's time to dive into the code. Here in Firefox, I'm assigned into my GitHub account and let's create a new repository. Let's call this repository CRM Inbox. And I'm going to make it public so you can reference it, but feel free to make it private. Let's initialize this repo with a readme. And for my purposes, I'm going to add an MIT license. Now that this is created, we can clone it down immediately. And I've opened git bash here, but any terminal or command line prompt is perfectly fine. I'm already within my projects folder where I store all of my code repos. And I'm going to cd into my build UX folder. From here, I'm going to type git clone, and let's paste in that URL of the git repo that we created. All right, this is cloning down. Once it's done, we can type code and CRM inbox, and this will open it up in Visual Studio Code. All right, now with Visual Studio Code open, you can see our README and license have appeared. Let me get this README cleaned up just a little bit here. Looking good. And let's start stemming out the files that we'll need for this project. The first is our index.html. I'm going to hit the exclamation point and tab for the Emmet abbreviation for the basic HTML structure. Let's name the title of this document Betaliza CRM. And this is the inbox view that we're building out. Let me get this file formatted real quick here. Next up, let's add an app.css file and enter index.html. Let's get it linked up. So link rel style sheet, href is app.css. Lastly, we're going to need an assets folder. And within this folder, let's create a couple subfolders. First up is fonts. We'll also need on the root level of our assets folder, icons, images, and lastly, we want to bring in some logos. All right, starting things off, let's grab the SVG we'll need for our logo. Back in Figma, we can navigate to our Atoms page and take a look at the logos that we designed. This finalized logo here, we can right click and copy as SVG, or feel free to set up an actual export for SVG as well. But I find copying out the code is all I really need because I don't really want to create a temporary file. Next up, we're going to go to a website called SVG OMG. And I have a dedicated how to video on handling SVG files and optimizing them for code. So feel free to reference that. In SVG OMG, I'm going to paste in the markup. And it's already optimized it down by 62%. So we have quite significant file size savings. Over in the markup tab, I'm going to copy out this code. And returning to our VS code here, let's create a new file in our logos folder. Let's call this Betaliza logo.svg. All right, pasting in this code, we have this huge mess of coordinates, but let's get this cleaned up a bit. And at the opening tag of the SVG, we need to add a viewbox attribute for proper sizing. So let's say viewbox 00, 134, and 48 for the height. This fill none is unnecessary, so I'm going to cut that out. And then if we look at the end of each path tag, we have these inline fill styles. I'm going to remove these because we're going to style this logo with CSS, and that'll allow us to accomplish both the light and dark variations without exporting separate SVGs. All right, that's taken care of, so we can close this file for now. And let's turn our attention to the fonts we'll need for this project. Going back to Figma, if we go to our particles page, we have our typography styles listed out here. And you can see that all these are in the Poppins font family. And it looks like we just need the regular and medium font weights. So back in Firefox, I highly recommend this Heroku app called Google Web Fonts Helper. If we search for Poppins, you'll see how handy this is. So we can select the styles that we need, in our case, the normal weight, as well as 500, which is the medium weight. Scrolling down further, it gives you the CSS font face blocks that we'll need to link to our local files for the font face. 
and we can customize the path to these as well. So in our case, this will be dot slash assets fonts, and then within the Poppins subfolder. We can download a zip of the fonts that we need and copy out this code to bring into our CSS file. So I've copied that out. Let's go into our app.css and paste this in and do a little cleanup here. First up, let's just make a heading comment that says fonts. And in terms of browser support, we really only need WAF2, WAF, and true type. And this should give us pretty sufficient coverage for modern mobile and desktop browsers. So I'm going to get rid of the IE9 compat mode line, as well as anything for IE6 and 8. And lastly, we won't need this legacy iOS SVG font either. Looking good. Let's get rid of these code comments that we won't need either. And to do this multi selection, I'm just highlighting some text and using Control or Command D, and that'll select any subsequent instances of the same text with multiple cursors. All right, that's looking pretty good. Last thing is I want to rename these files to be a little bit cleaner, so I'm going to get rid of the version name and just say Poppins regular and Poppins medium instead of the 500 font weight. Fix our indentation here. And one last detail. If I hit Alt or Option, I can create multiple cursors. Let's set this font display property to be swap. And this is for performance reasons. So initially, the browser will load any default font files while these load in the background and then swap them out as sort of a progressive enhancement and performance boost. All right, this is looking all great. Let's actually get our fonts added in here so we can create a subfolder for Poppins. And in our downloads folder, I'm going to extract out these files. And we want to copy the true type. WAF and WAF2 versions only. So we can copy these out. Now I've navigated to my project folder. In the assets folder, let's go into the fonts and Poppins folders from there, paste these in, and get them renamed. All right, with those renamed, we can go back into VS Code and you'll see all the files are appearing now as expected. Last thing to do to make sure that our fonts are loading as expected is to select the body element and set the font family to Poppins and Sans Serif as a fallback. One last thing is I prefer double quotes in my CSS files, so let's select all single quotes and get those replaced real quick. Looking much better. In our index.html, let's just type out some text that we can test. So I'm just going to repeat the document title. And we might as well do some body copy for good measure. So let's just put in some lorem text. All right, last thing to do is open this up in a preview. I'm going to navigate to my VS Code extensions with Control or Command plus Shift and X. And in here, you'll see I have an extension called Live Server, which is really handy for spinning up a local preview on your computer. And it also handles hot reloading and refreshing for you. So Control or Command plus Shift or E to bring back up my file navigator. And lastly, let's open up the command palette and run live server. So control or command plus shift P, type live server and open with live server. And this will automatically bring up your browser and you should see a live preview here. Now I can tell that Poppins has loaded. With some fonts, it's hard to tell. So I highly recommend using Firefox and you can always use the fonts panel in the inspector, which will confirm which fonts are loading and you can also play around with the different weights and variable font settings if those are available as well. All right, back in VS Code, a couple remaining things to do. We will have some images if we reference our designs in Figma and navigate to our pages. In our refined design, we didn't bother bringing in any images themselves, but if you look at our original design reference, we obviously have avatars for the signed in user and the avatars for the messages we've received as well as those that we compose. So I believe there are five distinct images in this mockup for now. So let's just go ahead and grab some suitable images that can be used as avatars. One free resource I really like for this is called diverseui.com and you can find all sorts of great high quality avatar images 
that can be used in your designs. So I'm going to go through here and just select five initial images and we'll get those brought over into our code base. All right, so I picked a variety of images here and downloaded them to my computer. I'm going to also copy these over into our working project folder. So just copied and then in our images folder, we can paste these in directly. With these added, we have our images taken care of. For icons, I'm going to do this in a separate episode because we need to export all the SVGs that we use in this project. So for now, if we want to retain this folder in Git, we need to add a .git keep file so that way this folder is retained in our version tracking. You can see once I added that, it went from gray, which means it was untracked, to being green because we added this new folder. Now the last thing that I'd like to do is to create a markdown file that has all of the raw text that we see in our user interface. And this is to eliminate mistakes when copying and pasting from design files, or let's say Google Doc source files, into our code base. And it gives us a great starting place for when we draft out our full HTML structure in the next episode. So lastly, let's create a new file. And I'm going to go through our final design in Figma and copy out all of the text that we need to build this out in HTML. All right, so I've copied all of that text out, and now I can rest assured that this is accurate to our designs. Ideally, we'd have a dedicated copy folder. If we were working in more of a full product team, but in this case, we're just pulling things out of the design that we built. So this will act as a good starting point for when we stub out the HTML in our next episode. So because we're at a good stopping place for now, Let's open our terminal in VS Code with Control Command plus tilde. And let's make sure that we commit our work up to GitHub. So we can type git status. And you can see that we have files that were not staged for commits and new files that are untracked currently. So first up, we need to add all of our files into version tracking. So we can type git add dot to add everything. And if we type git status one more time, you'll see that all of these new files are now changes to be committed. So we need to commit these changes so we can save them in a sense and give it a message of what work we accomplished. So we can type git commit hyphen m and open up a commit message. And inside of here, I like to have clear, concise, active language. So in this case, we add initial project setup and assets. If we add this commit message, we can check our git status one more time. So now it's saying that our local branch is ahead of the instance that we have in GitHub by one commit. And so to push our local commits, all we need to do is say git push. All right, and our changes are pushed up. So we can clear our terminal. So if we go back to Firefox and look at the CRM inbox project here in GitHub, we can refresh the page and see that all of our changes are made with our commit message appearing as expected. So this is a good place to stop for this episode. In the next episode, we'll start drafting out all the HTML structure that we need for this project. So thank you so much for watching and be sure to look out for the next episode.